looking at the long run now and what happens to costs, so we're looking at economies and diseconomies of scale. And these are the specification objectives. So key terms, economies of scale. This is where average costs fall as output increases, and this is in the long run. Um, and we can get lots of reasons for this, and I'm going to go through them in later slides. Uh, but really that definition is of something we call internal economies of scale and that's when average costs are falling because the output of a particular firm is increasing in the long run whereas external economies of scale are where average costs fall as the output of the industry increases in the long run um, so we've got a few reasons there cooperation labor Whereas diseconomies of scale, internal diseconomies of scale, are where average costs rise as output increases. This again would be in the long run, but it's output of the particular firm. A few reasons there for that, which I'll go through. And then external diseconomies of scale are where average costs rise as the output of the industry increases in the long run. And I'll go through um, a reason for that as well. So this is what it looks like on a diagram. It's important that you um, are able to label your diagram diagram it's uh, when we're looking this is a diagram sorry of internal economies of scale so we're just looking at the we're not looking at quantity because we're not looking at mar market we're looking at output on this although we do put a queue there and uh, we're not actually looking at revenue on here so we can just put costs up this vertical axis and it's really important that you're illustrating when average costs in the long run are decreasing that's what we call economies of scale and when they're increasing that's just economies of scale and that point a is representing the point of productive efficiency in the long run so where our average cost in the long run are at its lowest point now we have this is very similar diagram um to the one that you might have looked at if you're looking at short run costs or production costs in the last presentation um but this is actually what it looks like so these are the short run cost curves and um, sometimes we call this long run cost curve an envelope curve because it's enveloping um, these little short run ones and what these little short run ones are representing that would be like short run average cost it's hard, it's hard for me to do letters on here with the mouse short run average cost one and then the next one would be short run average cost two and it's just representing when this point gets kind of vertical here that's representing the maximum output that this firm can produce at that level of um, production but actually if they're able to expand uh, they actually move their cost curve downwards which is good because that means that costs are um, decreasing so we're now we, we really need to look at the reasons well why do larger firms have um, smaller average costs then why do they gain from that and then after a certain point why do their average cost curves start to increase so here are some economies of scale, blue representing the internal and red the external. I'm going to go through um, some examples of these. So it's really important that you're able to explain why economies of scale occur in the long run. Because we're not just looking at, um, on the short run cost curves, you know, we, we well, you will have realised that short run average costs um, goes down at first because you're spreading your fixed costs over a greater number of units and then you're not really explained in year one why it starts to increase um, other than to know that it's just called diminishing marginal returns um, but this is something different it's not about spreading your fixed costs over a greater number of units this is for for separate reasons in the long run why this happens um, so here we go let's have a look at the first one so this is the one that most students um, recognize and learn about purchasing or marketing so we can see if you go to a supermarket and uh, you need to buy some toilet roll or you need to buy some kitchen um, roll you know that buying it in a bigger package you get a cheaper deal per unit in that package it might cost more um, in total to buy that amount of toilet rolls or kitchen rolls but per toilet roll or kitchen roll it's usually um, smaller when you're buying in bulk so this is the first reason it's purchasing economies of scale because bigger firms are buying larger quantities and they get bigger discounts on the quantities so so yes their total costs are greater but their average costs are actually smaller marketing as well um, we can, it's a slightly different economy of scale but you get marketing economies of scale where larger firms um, find that um, 
just because they're maybe double the size of another firm, it doesn't mean that their marketing budget will be double the size. Um, so they, they usually have to increase their marketing budget the larger that they are, but it's not proportional, those increases. Um, maybe because their branding of one product, um, you know, Nestle Cheerios we've got here, branding of one product um, and money spent on one product will probably help the branding of another, you know, similar product that they bring out. So everyone's heard of Nestle before so they don't necessarily need to spend as much bringing out a new product as a completely unknown brand technical economies of scale so uh, larger firms are able to um, employ more specialist equipment um, and can afford that and uh, I always use this um, example of shipping containers um, uh, this larger ship won't necessarily cost twice as much to transport twice as many of these um, shipping containers um, so again we have rises in costs that are less than proportional than um, the increase in output being the reason and if we relate this on a small scale to smaller um, businesses you know a very small little um, business maybe with one person a sole trader operating it might have to spend 400 pounds or 500 pounds on a laptop and they might only use that laptop twice a week whereas a larger business is going to get more use out of that equipment than the smaller one so uh, average costs fall in that way Oh, skipped ahead. Specialist and managerial, so larger businesses are able to employ specialists and we know through specialization and division of labor this can increase the quantity produced and productivity. So rather than one person doing all the main functions of a business such as marketing, finance, operations, human resources, we can get specialist people, you know, we could have someone, he could be the person that's dealing with HR, this could be the person that's doing accounting and they're, you know, they're practiced in, they're skilled in these areas they're practiced in these areas so the quality and the quantity of what they produce increases so again lower average costs risk bearing we find that larger firms are able to buy, diversify into different markets um, I typed in diversification into Google and I got this picture up I think it's more about personal somebody um, thinking about investing some of their money but it's the same concept for businesses and so if there is a fall in one of these markets in terms of you know changing consumer preferences they've still um, been able to uh, raise um, money revenue in another market um, so and um, larger firms are able to insure themselves against risks as well because they've got more money to spend on kind of risk management and risk um, avoidance and those types of things financial we know that um, different banks give different interest rates so you should know this from macro uh, but it's the same for firms and it tends to be the larger the firm you are the lower the interest rate the bank is going to um, give to you because to be large you've probably been in the market for quite a while so you're probably quite trusted in that sense that's why the re how the relationship goes usually and so lower interest rate cheaper finance and most businesses do need to borrow money to be able to um, finance their operations sometimes to be able to expand and those types of things Okay, now on to external economies of scale. So this isn't just the benefit of the firm growing. This is the benefit of the industry growing. And uh, I think I got this from the TV program Silicon Valley, but um, all based about Silicon Valley in America. And you can see there's so many big companies based in a really small geographical kind of area, really close to each other. So if you are in Silicon Valley and you're, I say, Oracle there, because I've just ring them, it's not going to be hard to find somebody who's technical in this area because there are loads of other firms that have employed people, that are training people up and investing in those people in that type of area. So um, as the industry gets bigger, maybe your labour costs in terms of training people up get smaller. Um, and you can also you also have like auxiliary services located um, pretty near to where there's a high concentration of a certain industry. So um, you, the, probably these firms can uh, communicate with each other easily. I don't know a lot about tech, so I'm going to quickly go on to the other one. Um, but cooperation as well is um, usually as the industry gets bigger, there's more chances to cooperate and collaborate with um, in similar businesses um, and similar firms. So in the Massachusetts area, Boston kind of area, you have Harvard University and you have MIT, both amazing universities and both, you know, top of their league. Um, and they're actually collaborating at the moment on a kind of e-learning 
platform kind of thing but they're able to do that as the university market is is really big and there's lots of uh, players out there in the market so that you can share research and development costs and that's another reason why average costs decrease so with all of these explaining all of them you've really got to get to the crux of the issue which is why do average costs decrease as firms increase in size now looking at diseconomies of scale this is the opposite side of it so we're still increasing in size because we're still increasing our output but why after a certain point do long run average costs start to increase this side of the diagram why do long run average costs start to increase so let's have a look at a reason uh, more people in your firm bigger firm bigger operation more chance of miscommunication you might have to invest more in communication technology and it just generally gets harder um, to communicate but also to coordinate people you might have to have more meetings time is money um, you might have to have uh, people specialist people who are schedulers that are coordinating where people go project managers those types of roles those types of jobs so that costs more uh, I love the film Ants the beginning of it especially because you've got um, this character here on the psychiatrist chair saying oh I'm just so unimportant I'm just a really small part of this you know the ants colony and the uh, psychiatrist think great we've made a breakthrough you are unimportant you are just a small part but that's how often how people often feel when they're working for large organizations large corporations they think well if i wasn't here it really wouldn't make a difference so we might see increases in absenteeism decreases in motivation and that is going to decrease um the amount being able to be produced so that what that means is that average costs in the long run start to increase people tend to be generally a little bit more loyal to smaller businesses maybe it's because they feel a bit more important there and maybe a bit more negative and disloyal to larger businesses um, maybe they don't feel like they get that kind of um, personal treatment I don't know if that's that's true um, or not I think larger businesses can probably offer um, better you know kind of fringe benefits but yeah you might not get to work with the boss as closely anyway technical economies of scale I've got the same picture up here because actually this is a really big boat and yes it can transport loads and yes probably um, a ship that's half the size that can only transport half um, is less efficient but if there's a problem um, with the ship it's probably a lot more complicated and a lot more expensive to be able to resolve that problem and if it's running a little bit off course it might be more difficult to get it back on course it's a bit maybe a little bit big a bit unwieldy um, less flexible overcrowding now this is a external diseconomy of scale so this is when the market itself gets too big the industry itself gets too big so we might see this is Euston station the old Euston station in London we might see of crowd and congestion in certain areas I've heard I've never been to Silicon Valley but I've heard it's very congested and like places are often like um, parking is very difficult get a lot of pollution in those types of areas so firms have to spend money on kind of congestion solutions you might even have pressure put on raw materials in terms of um, there's so much demand for those factors of production the factor inputs so it increases the cost of them so average costs increase in that that sense so that's a bit of a whistle stop tour but that should take you through all the economies and diseconomies of scale most important things make sure you can define these um, and what I would do is I'd just memorize a few of the reasons for economies and diseconomies of scale um, you don't need to know them all I'd say the students tend to like uh, purchasing economies of scale financial economies of scale managerial because those are really easy to understand um, and then um, coordination communication motivation those are easy to understand as well and have at least one example of external economies of scale as well